Hello people of the internet, welcome back. So in this video it's another episode of my Unsung Heroes series um, that I wanted to call Absolute Legends but my mum told me not to. I'm going to say that at the beginning of every episode. And this one is about Charlotte Cooper Sterry who was um, one of the first women to win an Olympic medal and um, she was also profoundly deaf. Um, so she was born on the 22nd of September 1870 in Ealing in Middlesex in the United Kingdom. Her father was a miller and her mother's maiden name was also Miller and his name last name was Cooper which is super confusing but his job was a miller and his last name was Cooper and her mum's last name was Miller. Sure. And she learned to play tennis at Ealing Lawn Tennis Club and she was really good at it. Uh, she won her first senior singles title in 1893 at Ilkley. Uh, she then competed in Wimbledon and in her first appearance she reached the semi-finals but she didn't win. And then she won her first Wimbledon singles title in 1895. Um, she was in eight consecutive um, Wimbledon finals, singles finals, and that record stood until 1990 and she is still the oldest ever Wimbledon lady singles champion, which is quite impressive considering it's like 120 something years later. At the age of 26, so around 1896 or 1897 depending on like the time of year, um, she lost all her hearing. I couldn't find any information about how or why or if they know obviously like the medical stuff at the time wasn't that wasn't as advanced as advanced as it is now so maybe no one ever found out I mean still a lot of the times they can't find out and um, yeah so she, from the age of 26 she was as far as I'm aware completely deaf and the 1900s Summer Olympics she competed there and that was the first Olympic Games where women were allowed to compete um, but they were only allowed to compete in five different sports, which were tennis, obviously, sailing, croquet, equestrianism, and golf. And the reason for this was that at the time, it was considered quite controversial for women to take part in sports, especially at like a higher level, um, because it was thought that it was dangerous for women's bodies and it would, you know, be bad for your health. But um, luckily it's not, we now know that it's not. So um, women are now able to compete in whatever sports they want uh, without risk of infertility and death. I mean, you know, there's always a risk of death <laughs> if you do anything, but you know, without an excessive risk of um, health complications. Um, so she competed in the Olympic games, won the tennis, tennis singles event, and that made her the first woman woman to win an Olympic gold in a singles event. Um, she was also the first disabled athlete to win an Olympic champion, an Olympic title. There was actually another lady called Helene de Provost who had actually won an Olympic medal two months before. She was in sailing and she was in a mixed boat. So she, yeah, so she I think was the only woman woman in her boat. Um, but so she's not technically the first woman to ever win an Olympic gold medal but she was the first woman to win an Olympic gold medal in a singles event or in like a women's only event so that's why she commonly gets credited. In 1901 she married a man called Alfred Sterry um, who then became the president of the Lawn Tennis Association and um, there's a lot of information about her on the Lawn Tennis Association website. I'll link it um, in the description. They had two children together called Rex and Gwen, who were both quite big in the in the tennis world in their era. Um, I think Rex was like the president of like British tennis or something for um, a while in the 1960s, like 1960s and 70s. And Charlotte continued competing until to a high level, like in Wimbledon, until 1913. And she sadly passed away on the 10th of October 1966 at the age of 96 so uh, the sport didn't do her any harm she she lived a long life 
Um, and after she had passed away, her family tried to find her Wimbledon trophies and her Olympic gold medal, and they couldn't find them anyway. And her son's theory about what happened to them was they think she just gave them away to the gardener, which I think is quite like a anecdote about the kind of person she was. I don't think she was the kind of person that was really caught up on like the titles and the medals and stuff. I think she just really enjoyed the sport and wanted to be part of it, which I think is very sweet. Um, yeah, I'll put more information about her in the description and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Bye!